What up, cappers? Gamblers? Punters? What up, salutes? What up, mama? What up, Oprah? And it's Friday, so a special what up to the SBR family. I just had a very bad week. I also just had a glorious week. It was a very bad week because I lost $1,446 and at one point had lost seven days in a row. No gambler likes that. But it was a glorious week because it was yet another week spent as a professional gambler. And every gambler loves that. Losing seven days straight is just part of being a professional gambler. It's part of the job. And I love my fucking job. Breaking your pelvis attempting an 80-foot gap jump is part of being a professional snowboarder. Yeah, it sucks. But the snowboarder wouldn't have it any other way, and neither would I. The last thing I need in the world is fucking pity. I don't want it. I just lost seven days in a row. Pity yourselves if you've never lost seven days straight as a professional gambler. Man, how do you know if you're even alive? I actually had a great week. I banged two super hot salutes this week. Actually, one wasn't that hot. They know which one was which. But losing seven days in a row proves I'm a professional gambler. Imagine someone who knows nothing at all about sports, right? Just betting randomly for fun for seven days in a row. You think it would be possible to go seven days in a row with hitting at least one by fucking accident? No way. Only a pro could do that. Now, there's a couple things I need to get straight. First off, I do not sell picks, all right? I'm not in the pick business. I am a professional gambler. I don't sell plays for a living. I make plays for a living. And I share all of my plays, every single one of them, with my fans, friends, and followers. I tell you what bets I'm making and why I'm making them. Every day I tell you exactly how much money I'm betting, on what teams, at what odds, and then the next day I report my profit or loss. I do not suggest that anyone should just follow my bets blindly and you'll win every time. It means you and me are working together to take down the bookies. I tell you the angle I'm attacking those motherfuckers from, and you tell me the angle you're coming at them from. We triangulate on those motherfuckers, you and I, together, and when we do that, the money is in the bag. All right? And the other thing I need to address is those of you who keep advising me to stop playing parlays. The parlays I play... I can lose 6 out of 10 and be very profitable. Many of the parlays I play, I can lose 7 out of 10 and be profitable. If your average parlay is plus 233 and you hit 3 out of 10, you break even. My second parlay on SBR that I hit was plus 502. Today's parlay is plus 362. Some of you see me lose 5 days in a row and you panic on my behalf. Don't. Watch my record. Let me know when you consistently see me losing 8 out of 10 and you can send me a sympathy card for only being a break-even gambler. Maybe your parlays don't hit at a winning rate, but mine do. I lost $1,446 this week. I'm in a major slump. I've hit 2 of my last 11 days and have lost $1,918 over that time period. Even with all that losing, I'm up $473 since my first SBR video and I've hit 28% of my four, three, and two game parlays. Maybe you don't have the bankroll to handle seven day downswings. That comes with playing parlays. I do. It doesn't phase me a bit. I've got big balls and they get sucked frequently. Anyone who wants to criticize my play, show me your record. Are you transparent with everything you do like the bag? I'll put my record up against anyone now and forever. Can you beat the bag? Prove it. I'm proving my record every day. Prove that you beat me last month or over the last three months. Yes, I play a lot of parlays. I go for the 80-foot gap jump. Yes, I crash and burn a lot, but I stick enough landings to be a fucking pro. Watch me go, man. I'm excited. I gamble for joy. I gamble for greenbacks. I gamble for sleuths. And I'm crushing it in all three departments, so don't worry about the bag. Don't try and talk. Don't try and talk the bag off a ledge. The bag knows what he's doing. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk today's action. Today, I'm going for a $1,000 day. I have a three-game parlay. First, I have Toronto at home over the Boston Red Sox, minus 135. It is Marco Estrada versus Doug Fister. Estrada is 4-6 and six 
with a 4.89 ERA and a 1.38 whip. Now, he had just a terrible month, terrible June. He went 0-4 with a 10.03 ERA and a 2.19 whip. He has always, though, always had the Red Sox number, and he's a good pitcher. Listen to this stat. Opponents have missed on 33.5% of their swings against them when they're ahead in the count. Only, only Max Scherzer has a higher percentage. Amazingly, Estrada's only averaged 84.7 miles per hour on those pitches, man. Only R.A. Dickey is throwing slower this year. And thank God that guy's not in a Blue Jays uniform anymore. I cannot believe we traded Noah Syndergaard for him. You know, I was at a game last year, and he was pitching, and I had great seats, and he just got lit the fuck up. And when they, when Gibbons, Gibby pulled him, he was walking towards the dugout, and uh, there was that quiet moment. And I just yelled, very clearly I yelled, Dicky, you throw like a girl. And he stopped and made direct eye contact with me and said, I may throw like a girl, but I suck cock like a man. Gross. Enjoy Atlanta. But back to Estrada. He's a good pitcher. You know, only Dustin Pedroia hits him hard in the Red Sox lineup, and he's, he's not playing today. I like this matchup. And they're going up against Doug Fister. After being unwanted by the Angels and every other team in the league, he surprisingly had a good start with when the Red Sox brought him up last week. He went six innings, three in runs, seven hits, three walks, six strikeouts against a weak Angels offense. So this is how I see it. Here we had a 34-year-old cast-off whose career might be over, going up against a team that didn't want him. Everyone was pulling for him. Everybody wanted him to have a good start. The whole, everybody, any baseball fan wanted His family was there. Don't estimate, don't underestimate a player going up when everything is against him and, and, and everyone's cheering for him and his family's there and they want his career to continue. Don't underestimate Fister in front of his sister. And that's who the family name was toughest on. Not Doug, but Wendy Fister. Poor girl. But all those good vibes are over. No family will be there tonight. He doesn't pitch well at the Rogers Center. He has a career ERA there at 5.06. Someone is going to get fisted tonight, and it won't be me. Might be R.A. Dickey. Game two, Astros at home over the Yankees at minus 175. It's Lance McCullers Jr. versus Michael Pineda. McCullers is a monster. 7-1, 2.53 ERA, 1.04 whip. It's his second start off the DL. He will be a Cy Young candidate this year. 2-0 and in two career starts versus the Yankees with a 0.75 ERA. In six starts at home, listen to this. In six starts at home, he's allowed an expected batting average of 166. So that's based on the quality of contact you allow and your strikeouts. That is the best in the majors. Pineda is 7-4, and 4.12 ERA, 1.23 whip, and he's scuffling on the mound. In June, 5.86 ERA, 1.63 whip. Korea is hitting 600 off him with three homers. Springer has two homers off him. Astros are going to light it up. Final game, D-backs at home over the Rockies at minus 145. It's Rob Ray versus John Gray. Rob Ray, NL Cy Young candidate, 8-3, 2.87 ERA, 1.17 whip. In his past seven, he's 6-0 and with a 1.29 ERA. That's unbelievable. He's fifth in the NL in Ks. And he's going up against John Gray, who was the Rockies' opening day starter. He's been on the DL for two and a half months dealing with a stress fracture in his foot. How he's going to pitch is a question mark. He went 10-10 and 10 last year, had a breakout season, 185 Ks, 168 innings. But the Rockies have lost eight straight and are dealing with a lot of injury problems. Okay, so I got the Jays at minus 135, Astros at minus 175, D-backs at minus 145. I'm putting $300 on a parlay that pays at plus $368, which will get me $1,104 profit. So that's me, man. Those are my goods today. Let me know your action. Hit me at Jimmy the Bag uh, on Twitter. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, check me out at JimmyTheBag.com. But I, uh, I love these Fridays. I love the excitement of being on SBR with you guys. So let me know your strategies, man. Let's take this cash. Let's milk these bookies. Good luck out there, man. Let's take this, cappers. Good luck.